Our first sponsor for the podcast is Inverted Gear. Inverted Gear sells jujitsu equipment. They sell geese, rash guards, shorts, all that cool stuff. They're really cool people, really great customer service. They have a cool blog. Check it out. Go to invertedgear.com. Type in the coupon code SHOWTHEART15. No spaces. You'll get 15% off and you will enjoy what you get. Our next sponsor is Chimera Coffee. Chimera Coffee is coffee from Dominican Republic infused with nootropics. If you don't know what nootropics are, they're things that help your brain run a little quicker, fire the synapses a little faster, help you remember words better. Just Google it. Trust me, you won't go wrong. It's a great tasting coffee and uh, you'll love it. Go to their website, chimeracoffee.com with a K, not .com with a K, coffee with a K, <laughs> and type in the coupon code show the art, no spaces, and you will get 10% off. Boom. On this episode, we talk to Cade and Ty Rotolo. They are twins that train jujitsu, are green belts, and they train under the Mendez Brothers at AOJ Academy in Costa Mesa, California. They have won it all in jiu-jitsu as far as kids' competitions, including kids, pans, worlds, super fights. We had fun talking to them about their training and their mindset, and we hope you guys enjoy. And again, if you do, please give us a good review and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher and whatever else you can. And check out our website. Enjoy. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hey, what's up, my brother? How are you? Good, how are you? What's up, man? Awesome. How are you, guys? What's up, guys? <laughs> okay, who is who? <laughs> uh, so, I'm Cade, and then Ty's right beside me. I got a deeper voice. <laughs> uh, you have matured far past your brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm older, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> how you guys doing, man? Good. How are you? Good. Yeah. Do you guys remember meeting us ever? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Give me a <laughs> Think about it. All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you when we met you guys. Hold on. Let's let them. Let's let them guess a little bit. Okay. You can give them some details. It was during jujitsu practice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that narrowed at, it down. At, at AOJ. Yes. Yes. Um. Give me a second. It was in 2014. Was it? No, 13 maybe. 13. <laughs> They're kids, man. Oh. They don't remember what they ate last night. It was during. <laughs> <laughs> you had an acai bowl. Oh no, I had Mexican food for Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We met you guys at AOJ's first, first ever camp. Oh, really cool. We actually there's a picture of us. Um both of you are actually arm barring me. I'm standing in the air and both of you have one of my arms. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I remember now. Yeah, I remember. Boom! Yeah. yeah, we were there, man, and you guys, we had a blast with you guys. You took all the classes, and uh, you guys were like the entertainment. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you guys, no, I, I remember you guys for sure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What's going on, man? So how's training um, at AOJ, man? It's, it's fantastic, you know, it's a dream, really. It's, yeah, we're super lucky that the brothers, you know, came, came here to America and, uh, and they came literally opened up a gym ten minutes from our house, so so we're really stoked to be training with them. And it's just like a big happy family. It's really cool there. What's cool is you guys are even connected on a deeper level. Uh, you you having a brother and they being brothers. That's even better. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how's how's training? Um, is it competition training or is it just everyday training? Um. Well, I mean, usually it's uh, pretty much just like ch like normal training until um until we have like a c competition coming up where there's for like the kids or adults like same worlds or parents are coming up. Then then we start picking up the training pretty hard. But uh, usually it's pretty it's pretty yeah. normal, you know, chill training. But um until there's competition coming up, you know. Here's a good question. This is what everybody wants to know. What are you guys drilling? What are you guys doing on a regular basis? Because you guys are so young, but you're you're very yeah. successful, and you train with with you know arguably two of the best guys in the world at jujitsu. Yeah. How are you guys training? Are you guys drilling on your own? Are you only drilling in class? Are you staying after class, before class, this class, that class? Yeah, 
I'm willing to guess that you guys have mats in your bedroom. You have mats, yeah. in, the, you have mats so in the kitchen. You got mats in the like, attic. Fucking, yeah. yeah, we have, we do, we're actually in our bedroom right now and there's mats in the bedroom. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Do you have like a, a pullout mat that comes from under the bed and just slides right out? Yeah. Speaking of that, like a futon mat. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, I'm talking futon and I don't know There you go. You guys should invent that. You'll make some money. Sell it to IKEA. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. So, how are you guys training? Let's say you two brothers are gonna end this conversation with us and go drill right now in your bedroom. They're drilling right now at the same time. <laughs> as they're speaking to us. <laughs> yes. We're drilling as we talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. what, ki- what kind of numbers do you guys do? Do you guys do you guys drill for time or do you go for numbers? We just drill like like we just drill whenever we want really at home. Like we just drill until we're over it, you know? So you know, we'll start drilling for a while and just, you know, having fun. So just drill whatever we want. So you drill for fun? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We just drill for fun. Usually it could be for like an hour, it could be for, you know, a few hours. So are you guys for like thirty minutes? Are you guys yeah. alter- okay, so. are you guys alternating? Like you pick a specific technique, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna go ten times. You go ten times, or oh. yeah, 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 for sure. Well, what usually happens is our drilling sessions somehow turn into sparring. <laughs> 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 and then, and then uh, after we spar, sometimes we're like, oh, you could have done this, and we'll drill that sometimes too. Mm, but so yeah, cool. somehow all our drilling sessions turn into sparring. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. And how often do you guys take class? Only once a day. Yeah, yeah usually just much. once, once sometimes twice in the morning, and then uh, you know, a lot of times we'll come train at home, and then and then train is my sister too, and little, then my sister trains at night. Little Naya. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> she's a beast. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's a little monster. We've been training. <laughs> training her since she was a baby yeah <laughs> man yeah we saw her like i said we saw her when we when we saw you guys when we came for the camp and she was just so tiny she, i don't i don't even think she was like training fully yet and uh it, it yeah, was, yeah she's probably like yeah. two or three or something yeah it was fun to see your your um connection with her then yeah yeah <laughs> What is your day like? What is a regular day like for you guys? Are you guys like, I know you're into skateboarding and surfing. What, what do you guys like to do besides jujitsu? And you can't say so jujitsu. <laughs> yeah, our day consists, um, well, in the morning we tra- train, and then after that we do some school. And it's cool because when we're homeschooled, you know, we're, we're flexible with time and everything, you know. So, um, nice. so after we do our school, we have like a number of uh, activities like to do, which either surfing is one of our favorites, mm. but, um, but sometimes the wind's on it. <laughs> so, uh, so we started a new sport, soccer. This is our first season. We're loving soccer too, and then uh, fishing and fishing, fishing a lot. Fishing is awesome. <laughs> nice. Go, Marco. Yeah. So those are like the sports we're playing right now. Nice, man. What what sport is the funnest? And don't say jujitsu. If I can say jujitsu, <laughs> uh, it, it'd probably be between uh, fishing and surfing. I like surfing for me. Why do you guys like surfing? What what's what's the big deal about surfing? I just like water. I don't know. I just like being around the ocean. It was kind of like AOJs even by the ocean, you know? Yeah. 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 But um, uh, like what I like about surfing is like uh, it's like it's hard to even like stand up. You know, it's hard to learn how to surf, and then once you get it, it gets like super addicting, almost like a almost like jujitsu. Mm. You know, yeah, like, it just gets addicting after after a few classes. So. But it's not yeah. jujitsu. <laughs> no, it's not quite jujitsu, but it's a little it's a little more dangerous, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you fo- you crash into a wave and it don't hurt. It de- I mean, it doesn't feel right. It, it hurts sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, sometimes people think you, you fall in the water. You are like, oh, it's water. It doesn't hurt. Sometimes it slams you. You can get like back off and rolling off. How often are you guys surfing? couple times a week or yeah as much as we can you know like whenever we have time you know we'll just go out when the waves are if, even if it's decent you know we'll just try to go out as much as you can nice and when's your next jujitsu competition what competition are you guys doing next um uh, i think the Hicks cup in japan we're thinking about doing the Hicks and cup in japan that'd be a really cool one i've never Ooh. been to japan Nice. So uh, I'm I'm thinking about that one, so I'm, I'm really excited. Nice, and um and your your professors always do that tournament. Are they going to do it this year? 
Probably. I, I haven't asked them, but I bet they will. They always do it. Yeah, that's like their, their signature tournament that they always do besides the world. Yeah, yeah they, they, I love that tournament. Who cool. is your favorite Mendez brother? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, that's a messed up question. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you're, you're allowed to skip that question. <laughs> I like them equal. They're both awesome guys. On and off the mat. <laughs> Good. Because Great uh, mentors. You, look at that. <laughs> you, you answer that question correctly. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> what is your goals in jiu-jitsu, guys? Like, do you want to be the Mendez brothers when you grow up, or do you want to be the Rotolo brothers when you grow up? What do you, where do you see yourselves when you're your professor's ages? It's a, like a little bit of both. I want to be, um, I want to be like the Mendez brothers, where they're traveling the world teaching seminars, and then uh, that's what I, I think that that's what I want to do too, like travel the world, you know, just you know, getting to see all cool different parts of the world, and then um, teaching seminars. And then eventually settling down, having your own gym, like the bros, you know? Mm -hmm. So they're pretty much great mentors. I mean, that's pretty much what I want to do when I'm older. That's gonna be, that, Those are, like, some of my goals. Travel the world, teach seminars, and then also, um, like, be able to uh, just settle down one day and, you know, have my own gym. Awesome. Awesome. And what would your gym be called if you guys opened up your own gym? Wow, that's a good Ooh. question. Ooh. Boom. Uh, the style of jiu-jitsu? Yeah. <laughs> it's more like an end of being something like we call little brother jiu-jitsu or something. But okay. like, I'd like it to be like, um, I don't know, like something crazy. Yeah, something cool. <laughs> yeah, um, you better start thinking because you guys got a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Roots, Roots Academy. The Roots, oh, Academy. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Root. <laughs> Do it. Nice. Yeah. What are your some of your accolades? How many medals do you guys have? This is crazy. How many medals do you have? Uh, <laughs> we lost count about like a year and a half ago, two years ago. Dang. How many? We, yeah. Well, we we had our we had our medals all like lined up on our ra on a rack on our wall. Yeah. But when, after our, I think we won maybe champ or something, we put a few medals and the rack broke. And oh snap! <laughs> it got it got so heavy. So. We kind of just walked out after that. We just put them all in a bag. You can stuff them under the bed and <laughs> never really counted in a while. If you can give somebody your most prestigious jujitsu resume that you guys hold, like all the major tournaments that you're proud of winning, what would they be? Give, give us a quick rundown. All right. Probably the World Pro in Abu Dhabi for kids, pans, and uh, world. And how many how many times have you guys won those? Every uh, time. Every time. Damn. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what, five years in a row, six years in a row? Uh, uh nine? I think it was nine. <laughs> <laughs> like eight or nine. <laughs> Dang. Well, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Thank you. It, it shows jujitsu is your life and and what what do you guys feel you've gotten out of martial arts? Confidence, for sure. Lots of confidence. Yeah. And uh, this a lot of this, like... I feel like self-confidence, like knowing that I can always protect myself on and off the mat, you know? Mm. And then, uh, you know, that's that's a huge part of it. And then, uh, and you know, I like joy. Like, you know, it's super fun. I enjoy doing it, you know? So that's another thing, you know, like a new sport that I love. Very interesting. And one one thing myself and Marcos were talking about earlier was like, you guys are at that age where, oh, also congratulations on your green belts. You guys just got promoted, right? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you guys. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so, but yeah, like, like I was saying, Marcos and I were talking about this. You guys are what, 14 years old, 13 years old? 13. 13. 13. You're at that age where a lot of parents start bringing their kids into martial arts schools. You know, yeah, and they go, they bring their kids in for martial arts to build that self confidence, to build like um, discipline and and a champion mindset and leadership, and you know, give them something yeah. healthy and and you know, fun to do. And I feel like you guys, just from talking to you and meeting you and hearing from you, you know, on the internet, you guys have achieved all those things that are promised to every new student in a martial arts academy. And so <laughs> Thank you. that means you guys are, are role models for many kids. How do you, how, how do you feel about that? <laughs> pretty cool. I mean, pretty cool to be considered a role model, you know? <laughs> <laughs> pretty nice, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I like that. Still have a long ways to go, but it's still, 
I like where I'm at right now. Do you guys feel like, I know you just said that you feel like you, you're confident in holding your own on and off the mat, but do you truly feel like you can defend yourself in real life situation? If somebody's like messing around with you guys or your friends, do you truly feel like you can defend yourself? And what is the limit? Like, what is the human being limit? Is it a kid like, you know, 15 years old, 16 years old? Where you're like, all right, maybe, maybe I got to step back. Maybe I need my brother to help me out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think, I mean, we don't really, obviously, we just try to avoid fights as much as we can, you know, but of course. I mean, I feel like I, I could, um, I feel like I could definitely protect myself against, uh, you know, someone on, you know, off the mat, you know, I feel like I could, I could definitely protect myself, but, you know, usually we just try to avoid fights, you know. Of course, of course. And I, and I didn't mean that you guys would pick any fights. I'm just, I'm just curious. Oh, like, yeah, I, I know. Of course. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're not the Diaz bros. <laughs> they're the Rotulo bros. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so do you guys feel that like what would you do for example if one of your friends was being bullied you guys were at the beach and you guys went just you were just hanging out and and you see one of your friends in a distance that didn't come with you and he was being bullied like yeah his face was getting mushed into the sand and <laughs> and, 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 you, and he screamed yeah. for help what would uh, you guys do i can't believe you said this i can't believe you said this because what well, great i think i was in fourth grade and then, uh, or third grade, and then uh, my, I, then I went to school, and then the next day I see my friend, his face is all scratched up, and oh. I'm like, what, what, what happened? And he's like, uh, some kid who bullied me like shoved his, my, his, my face into the asphalt. I'm like, what? Ooh. What? I'm like, I'm like, who, who did that? And then um, he said the name of the kid, but he wasn't there because I'm pretty sure he got suspended, you know. Mm. So I was, you know, I was bummed on that, you know. It wasn't cool, but if I saw it happening for sure, I would have helped him out and you know stopped him, but. You know. And how would you stop somebody? That that's the big question because everybody wants to know. Not everybody has been in a in a in a street fight or a self defense situation, but everyone right. always wonders how would what would I do? Like what? How far would I take it? Especially in jujitsu because there's no punches, there's no kicks. Uh, essentially, you, mm -hmm. you have to use your jujitsu. So if you had to come up from behind someone who's bullying your friend, what would you yeah. do? Boom! What would you do? Or pull him off for sure i just get, get him off him and then and then if he started like maybe like trying to swing at me or something yeah then then you know i'd probably go for a double leg or something and then you know it's control you know yeah yeah control the, control the situation i don't think i need to like batter his face in or anything just like <laughs> just to show him just to show him like hey you know quit it you know yeah, so it's like duck under those punches, get close, yeah. attach yourself yeah, to your opponent, dump them down, control them, mm -hmm. choke them. Because the scenario that you gave on the beach, maybe I can do a barambola because not on asphalt. <laughs> ah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the barambolos. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's get into barambolo since you guys brought it up. How do you right. feel when people are like? clowning on the barambolo uh, i don't know i mean <laughs> i i mean it's, uh, i think i think the people who are like kind of clowning on a the barambolo are like more than like the old school players like butterfly clothes are you know <laughs> we both love we both love the old school we use a lot of butterfly and clothes i feel like our, our game's kind of like a hybrid between like the new school daily Kiva, reverse daily Kiva stuff you know mm -hmm. and then and then and then we still we still love our classic like like my dad games more like butterfly uh, lasso uh -huh. you know half guard X guard half guard so nice. so like I've had my my dad's been teaching me like that kind of game my whole life and mm -hmm. then now I have the brother to show me like all the new school techniques so I feel like you know it's a really good hybrid just molding all the techniques together is pretty sick yeah and how important do you think it is if you think if you even given it any thought to train in gi and no gi oh yeah we we, we I mean. We used to train Nogi about once a week, but we, we just ha haven't really been training Nogi in a while. But, uh, I mean, me and my brother, like, usually when we do maybe tournaments like Pan yeah. or, or World, yeah. we do the Nogi divisions too, and, and we usually, we do Nogi a lot at home. Yeah, we get we do Nogi a lot at home also. So. Yeah, and then you're probably in too, your underwear is at home all, <laughs> all day. Yeah, yeah. In, <laughs> in, our, in our underwear. <laughs> What do you think you would be missing out if you just train in a gi? Like what and you never trained no gi at all, period. What do you think you would be missing out in, if anything? Uh almost like a whole different just 
game, I guess. And like, Mogi's cool because it's completely different than Gi. It's like a whole other... Uh, sure. It's like a whole Different other control, level. different uh, grips and stuff. And he's mm. the back, the neck, the elbows. It almost seems like Nogi would be better in a street fight because most people aren't going to be wearing a Gi in a street fight, you know? So. <laughs> yeah. But it's arguable that, that the shirt... It's arguable that a shirt can act like a gi. Like you can, you can use a nice, a nice, uh, thick shirt and grab some. Oh of yeah, that. definitely. You know definitely flannel or something. <laughs> a flannel. <Absolutely. laughs> you, I bet you guys are. I bet you guys are wearing flannels right now. <laughs> no, Kate shirtless, and I just got a nice thicker shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> nice man, but um, yeah. So okay, what do you think you would be missing out? And be specific if you only train no gi and didn't train any gi. Oh man, if I gee, that's a hard question. Um, what would I be missing out on? If you well, only train no gi, I mean, ton- the cool thing about training no gi and gi is that I mean, you have so many techniques to learn. You know, yeah. like I think if I didn't train gi, I mean, I'd be missing out like on a lot of things, especially like you know, for example, like the barambolo <laughs> yeah. or any gi strokes or anything like this. You know, yeah, any any like thing concerning the gi is like huge. You know, so I mean. You're missing out on a lot of technique. At least half my game, I think. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, because I bring that up because that's that's becoming a very popular thing nowadays, especially with with these big submission only no gi tournaments where there's guys that only yeah. train no gi and only and then there's guys that only train. Actually, I don't know if anybody only trains gi. People either only train no gi or they train both. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How do you guys yeah, feel yeah, about I that think, stuff? Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I've never. I don't. I can't think of anyone right off my head that doesn't train the book. Yeah. <laughs> but um. But yeah, I. I mean, I love like the. This, I like all these new tournaments that like like the submission only nogis. I think they're super like exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. 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 But it's an excitement to jujitsu, you know. What is your so favorite really like big those. tournament to watch nowadays? Oh, like, like nogi wise, or I like the World Pro UAE. Okay. Abu Dhabi is probably one of my favorites. Yeah, probably ADCC is one of my favorites. Mm. Really like that. Like that. Okay. And the EBIs are lots of fun to watch too. Sometimes, you know. Yeah. yeah obviously, fans and world. It's like not only like the technique to watch, but also like the whole atmosphere and mm-hmm. how everyone's yelling. And were you guys there? <laughs> yeah, we were. Nice. Let's say Eddie Bravo said, "Hey." Rotolos, I want you guys to fight in super fights in the next EBI. Would you would you say yes? It's gotta be sure, no gi yeah. though. It's yeah. gotta be no gi. Yeah, I did it. Just gotta work on my splits a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> your splits? Don't wanna get banana split. Yeah. <laughs> oh your banana split, like uh <laughs> like Yeah, I, I don't wanna get electric chair or anything like that. <laughs> mm, so true. So and, uh, but yeah, I yeah. Think- for sure, we'd practice nogi. I mean, if anyone asked us to do like a nogi event like that, yeah, we'd practice nogi, you know, before the, the fight, obviously, you know, just to get used to it. But. For sure. Are you guys training in leg locks at all? I know in a lot of kids' divisions, you can't do any, but are you still got. Yeah. Like, still training? Yeah. For oh, sure. Definitely. I think it's better to learn now than later. I mean, sometimes, every time before we fight, me and my brother would go, all right, are we doing Abu Dhabi rules? Or are we doing <laughs> IBJJF? Nah. But it's always black belt rules. We rarely do green belt rules. Okay. Okay. You, you, you're putting a higher standard, just getting getting yourself ready for that black belt division. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, ready for the future. <laughs> I'd rather be getting heel hooked by my brother at home than, you know, go get heel hooked first round in ADCC, mm. you know? so. What is your favorite match of all time? Any tournament? Ooh. For the two of you, you guys have to pick your own. Okay. Oh, that's gonna take a this is gonna this is processing. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know the match has to include either Hafa or Gi. <laughs> yeah, probably. Or okay. not. Or, or not. not. Uh oh. Oh, I know, but they have some pretty exciting matches. Okay. Um. Woof. Okay. So I have. Uh, there's two that come to mind. So, so one is Professor Hoffa when he fought. Cobrinha in what's that? Pan's or world? I forget. I think it was Pan. Where he armbarred uh, Cobrinha? Yes, yes. Uh. When he armed Cobrinha, that was. <laughs> I, we were there for that one. It was like gnarly. Like when he armbarred everybody, like because every time they fight, they're either winning by like advantages or just like a few points yeah. difference. You know? Yeah. When Hoffa armbarred him, like everyone just jumped out of their bleachers. Like especially everyone on, uh, like the Atos team, and, and then it was just like, oh, it was huge. I was, it was like. <laughs> 
That was pretty epic. That was an epic moment in jiu-jitsu. Super yeah, that epic. Was, yeah, that was really crazy. One of my favorite, like, looking fights was when Hoffa fought, uh, I think it was, this is a little while back when Hoffa fought, who was it, uh, Big Mac? Hoffa fought Big Mac. It was such a big size difference. It was awesome. I, uh-huh. I, I, was, I was enjoying that one. Is yeah. that a, is that a word? I can't remember his name for some reason. Yeah. I think it was his name. It's all good. <laughs> One of my favorite <laughs> matches is Hoffa versus Cobrini at ADCC. I think it was their second fight when they fought for like 40 minutes. It was the first fight. Yeah, first that was crazy. Oh, yeah, that was nuts when they both had like gnarly heel hooks on each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that was... and your professor was going for anaconda after anaconda choke. Yes. Yeah. That, that was, I remember that one. That was great. <laughs> Did you guys ever go I, to an ADCC? Never. I've never been to one. Except the one that I competed in, but I wasn't like an ADCC. That yeah. was like the, the Abu Dhabi trial for like kids. Yeah, I've never been to a real... I kind of... I really want to go, though. It's so fun. You guys should go, man. You should uh, you should uh, offer to, to replace somebody who gets injured in like the, the <laughs> lightweight division. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Are there, are Gary, there... Tona, Gary Tona has to do a EVI, so he has to pull out. I'll, I'll take Gary's spot. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Are there any other jujitsu players that inspire you guys other than the Mendes brothers? Oh, for sure. I mean, there's so many. Ev- everyone. I mean, there's so much talent right now. It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's like, who so are fun you, to watch. And who are you loving yeah, like right Jacques now? Ray is super fun to watch. Mm. I like Jacques Ray. I like uh, a lot of long new school guys like, you know, Andre Galvo. Okay. Well, Mar- 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 Marcelo Garcia. Okay. Nice. I, I love those guys. I like all, all, almost like everyone, you know. Like I like like everyone really. Your Keenan gu- Cornelius, okay. Meows. Your guys' games is absolutely like inspired by the Mendez brothers, and it's 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 so obvious. But who else inspires your game? Like, do you ha- add elements of their game like more than others? Obviously, you always pick things from everybody. But like besides the Mendez brothers, who's the next kind of guy that, if there is, that that kind of inspires your game yeah. in a big way? Uh, Andre, a lot. I like to, every time, all the time I watch Andre's highlight videos. Yeah, yeah Andre got the, and me and my brother drill it and then try to do it in tournaments. And I mm. love watching all of Andre's. Yeah, videos. Andre and, uh, the Liera brothers. Okay. Liera, yeah, yeah, I, I enjoy, I enjoy Lucas Wetch too, because I love watching him, uh, like, you know, fight, like, the super heavy divisions yeah. when he's going against, like, big heavy guys you know and watching his half guard is unbelievable it's one of my favorite guards to play so mm. like when i see him you know using his half guard it's like super i really like that so. mm. nice yeah his half guard is legit we're we've been we've been playing with his half guard for the past like six months yeah it works yeah Lucas <laughs> half guard the best in the world probably yeah definitely that's a bold statement huh yeah but sh- <laughs> i you can back it up <laughs> <laughs> Oh snap! Yeah, so um, I don't know what else you guys want to talk about. <laughs> Let's leave it up um, to you guys. You guys, you guys are the the interviewees now. You guys get to pick what we talk about. Oh man! Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I want to interview Ty right now. Here I go. Perfect. Oh, snap. Um, <laughs> what was your favorite match? Um, uh, you already asked that question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, don't it, take off questions. Just, hey, you can't take off <laughs> questions. <laughs> I just realized how hard your guys' job is. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it's hard to think of questions. Yeah. Uh, but we like to... See, the thing is, we like to just talk. Like, we're not necessarily yeah. trying to just interview you. We kind of want to, like, have a conversation, too. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Well, how about this? Okay. Let's see if we can... Let's interview you guys instead. Oh. oh. Okay, sure. Oh, Go I ahead. S- I suck at okay. this, though, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what gym do you train at? What gym do we train at? We train at a school called Sub Force Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Lynnhurst, New Jersey. Okay. Boom. Cool. In, oh. In which right. Marcos is the professor here? Yeah, I'm no, one of the professors, right. and Abraham okay. is the other professor, coach. Ooh. Cool. That's awesome. What is your favorite submission? Ooh. Go, Marcos. My favorite submission is the one that makes my opponent tap out. Yeah. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I'm not that. Bad. I'm not that bad at this. <laughs> no. My favorite how, how submission is any arm bar yeah. from any position. Or uh, any arm bar from any position of arm bars. Too. Honestly, I'm I'm uh, loving <laughs> reverse triangles right now. Really? Yeah, from multiple reverse areas. Reverse triangles. Yup. Oh, 
I almost kind of like made up a cat license or a bicep like in the day from a reverse triangle. Oh, no. Nice. Oh, please send it to us right now. <laughs> <laughs> how long do you guys train for? Ooh, how, <gasps> how long do we train for or, or how long have we how been long training? How long have you been training for? In jiu-jitsu or martial arts, period? Martial arts, period. period. Okay, I've been training since I was 15, so that's about 11 years. Uh, this guy's age oh, dropping. Cool. <laughs> I won't do that. I've been training martial arts for like 13, 14 years. Since you were what age? Awesome. In your business. Cool. <laughs> nice. Marcos so is a young. little old. <laughs> um, my, my nephew calls me Uncle Grandpa. <laughs> Uncle Grandpa. Oh, my God. <laughs> Next question. I'll take a vowel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take an oh I'll take an acai bowl. <laughs> um, an acai bowl. How much acai do you guys eat on a daily basis? Daily? Yes. Not every day, but pretty much every time we go to. Eh, pretty much every day, almost every other day. Do you Definitely. guys go to that spot that's right down the street from AOJ? Was it bonsai bowls? Was oh it? yeah, that's bonsai bowls. That's one of our sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so are you getting free bowls after every class? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, man. Do you get the show yo bowl? Oh, yeah, yeah. show yo bowl. That <laughs> one's so good. Yeah. Shirasai. Yeah, the last time I went, I saw the show yo bowl, and I'm like, oh, cool. I'll get that. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's really good. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I customize my own bowls, too. That's really cool. So you guys have the in. You guys can go in, make your own bowl, special treatment, Rotolo Bros, <laughs> famous world yeah. celebrities. Boom. They take they take care of us. They're they're awesome. So, what yeah. is what does your bowl look like? What's in it? Okay, okay. so sometimes it, it depends. Either I get a sai or pataya. Sometimes when I get pataya, okay. I get it like because pataya is like super bright, it's bright pink. Yeah. So I get like a bunch of raspberries on it, and then and then uh, sometimes I get chocolate chips on it. I'll ask the best. Chocolate chips on pataya, so good. Wow. <laughs> I sometimes get the diamond head, which has. It's like one of the more healthier bowls, but okay, it tastes the head. best to me. If you, okay. could drill, if you could drill any technique right now, what would it be? Go. Boom. Uh, go, Ty. You go first. Uh, Three, two, X one. Star, X, okay. X guard to... I'll just draw all the X guard variations. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Next. Okay. Uh, five, do any? It'd probably be... It's solid. Um, uh... Like a like the fly armbar variation where you unhook the arm, push your head down, and do like a front roll over their back to the armbar. That one's super cool. Hold up, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> so so like say you're like you're you, you got like judo grips like normal grips. Uh -huh. You get the you get the underhook on one of the guy's arms. You push the other. You push his head down, and then your back knee flies over his head, and then in the gap between his arm and his like. In his stomach, it's like a flying armbar over the person's oh, back. Oh like, yeah, I've seen that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, almost like the flying squirrel. <laughs> you go to an armbar. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. Have you guys ever hit that in competition? I haven't done it in competition yet, but I've I've, I've done it in a training before. Are you afraid of breaking cool. your neck in competition? <laughs> uh, no, not really. Pam's gotten knocked out before, though. I've gotten knocked out one time. That was, that was really bad. Wow. And how did that happen? I, I was in gra I was in Vegas and, and grappler I was doing a grappler's quest and I was fighting some really huge kid. Uh -huh. So um, so I was fighting him and I and I jumped guard just because I didn't want to stay standing with him really because he was ginormous <laughs> and so I jumped guard but my my feet kind of slipped off like on my feet like like came unlocked and like I slammed my head back Oof. and the mats were like really thin on wood Aww. like or concrete. They're really thin on concrete, so when I hit my head, it just it put me out real fast, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And then I I woke up, I woke up, and I didn't even know I was in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. And uh, that's so how long scary. did it take you to yeah. recover from that? A few hours. Oh yeah. man, that sucks. That had to be very yeah. scary. So he ended up having like a good sized concussion. Like it wasn't like a small concussion. He had like a a pretty bad concussion. Mm. And, uh, the Spe doctor, I think, gave him three, three uh, words to remember. Three words to remember: it was food, airplane, and apple. An apple. Why didn't he? Why and wasn't uh, one of the words jujitsu? Because I, I, I party too easy. <laughs> you know what three words you remembered? 
Yeah, but we still remember how long ago was that. It was uh, a long time ago. It was but he kept sh- on getting them wrong, and he had to stay there for so long. You said, "Show the art." <laughs> they had to. They had to start start for the rest of my life. Boom. So, speaking of competition, do you guys obviously you guys watch all the adults and and look up to all the adults? But are there any kids that you're looking out for um, in in the kids competition scene? Yeah. Well, drop some uh, names. Uh, uh, one of our one of our sponsors, Show Your Roll. Mm-hmm. We we kind of we kind of helped them, and then we helped them like pick a few kids. We made like a Show Your Roll Grand Team. Nice. So, so we or A and P, A and P and Show Your Roll, you know. Mm-hmm. And then so they made they we ended up making like a little Show Your Roll Grand Team. And so me and my brother, we, we kind of helped chose a, a few kids that we saw. We, we thought that were like you know like really you know cool technical you know kids, up and like, comers. Yeah, up and exactly. Comers. That's up and comers like and so. You know, there's, so we have a few kids on that team that are just super sick. Yeah, we have a lot of sick kids. What about kids from other teams? Yeah, yeah. Like we picked a bunch of kids from other teams. No, I mean, uh, are you oh, guys? No. I think I'm asking. Um, are you guys looking and kind of studying other kids from other teams in case you have to in case you have to compete against them? Uh, not really too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't really we don't really focus on like like uh, our other competitors. Really, we usually just kind of like. Focus on ourselves when it comes up, like to that, you know. Okay. Because um, like EBI, because like EBI is doing those kids super fights, and those are pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah I've seen those. those. They're super cool. Those yeah. are awesome. Yeah, uh, Grace won the last EBI super fight. You guys like I her game? I saw that. Yeah, yeah Grace. Yeah, it's different, which is cool. Her the beast. Yeah, her, her game is like super, super Eddie Bravo. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's Eddie Bravo. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys incorporate? Did you guys incorporate any tenth planet techniques into your game? Oh yeah. Um. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like. I like. It's really cool to watch, and I think some of it's illegal for IBJJS and the tournaments that I do. Yeah. But just the other day, me and my brother were sparring, and I got him in like I think it was an electric chair or something. Nice. Nice. So you you guys yeah, like the lock. They got a lot of names for different techniques. I I can't remember all of them, but yeah, there's so many different names. But I got I think got him in an electric chair. If you had to choose one, uh, a classic Eddie Bravo uh, or Tenth Planet techniques, you can either do the lockdown and get really good at it, rubber guard, get really good at it, or like the truck rolls. Well, you guys already do kind of the truck rolls. Yeah, like the. Uh, yeah, like the Baron. Yeah, they're like Baron Bola rolls, I guess. Do bamboo. I actually like high guard too. If I take a in Eddie Bravo, I'd probably do like the like the rubber guard variation over the lockdown. Okay. Okay. Why is that? Uh, I like the I like the uh. Well, I guess I was gonna say I feel like there's more attacks from there, but there's a lot of trippy attacks from the lockdown too. So, um, it's hard. I don't know. I don't really drill. I don't really drill those two techniques that much. But I think I I, pr- I would prefer uh, rubber guard. Do you guys know how to stop it? If somebody puts you in rubber guard, oh yeah. What Definitely. would you guys do to stop the rubber guard? Somebody starts rubber guard, they get you in the, like the basic rubber guard lockdown or mission control. Um, what would you guys do right from there? They start breaking you down. Uh, I try to posture up and stand up. Okay. I guess. I mean, yeah. Po- I try to stand up, probably like trying to keep my back and neck straight. Just try not to suck them in. You know, try not to let them suck me in close, closer. Mm. Break my posture, you know. Nice. nice. Okay. And what about your arms being exposed? What would you do if your arms start getting exposed while you're doing that? Yeah, I'd grab the hips. Mm. Or grab, the, like, the pants, like, right around the hips. I think that's where I'd grab, just to try and prevent, you know, anything from, like, triangles or arm bars. Okay. Nice. What do you guys think uh, helps your game better? Is it uh, repetition of technique, like drilling it fast or drilling it slow for form? Or is it maybe positional sparring, specific sparring, like you starting an X guard and your brother uh, starting on top and you're trying to sweep him, he's trying to pass? Like, what do you think? Like, I think, I like, yeah, positional sparring. Like, positional sparring. I think, like, specific training. I, I like the, I feel like, I feel like a, Whenever me and my brother start in a certain position and then fight from there, like either it's good or bad, mm-hmm. like we know how to fix our mistakes from there rather than just drilling. Mm-hmm. You know, you yeah. can just drill it all day. You're not really too sure if it's going to work in sparring, you know? Mm-hmm. So, very true, very true. Like There's some things that happen in sparring that don't happen while you're drilling. So Boom. when you, when you're doing sparring, you get to cover all the details and things nice. like that. 
All right, last question, because I know we got to go. You guys got to go. Yeah, they got to go surf. How do you, because you guys are champions, how do you build a champion mindset? How did you guys get to the point where you guys could win all these tournaments nonstop every year, year after year, and you're only getting better and you're only growing? You're not even at your, you're not even in adulthood yet. How do you build that champion mindset? I think I don't like to lose more than I like to win. <laughs> mm. I I really, me and my brother are extremely competitive and we hate to lose. So this like, just the fact that we just do not want to lose each tournament, I don't know. It just, mm. uh, <laughs> okay. I would not, I don't want to lose. <laughs> 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 so don't I lose. <laughs> so yeah. you're saying hate losing more than you love winning. Exactly, yeah. Mm. And train hard, of course, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. course. And then and then obviously when you lose you have to figure out what you did wrong, you know, of course. But but yeah, just your your willpower not to lose should be stronger than you know, you wanna win. Yeah. So. Nice guys. Yeah. That's a good gem. Well, um, you know, we gotta go. You guys wanna give any shout outs and please tell people how they can reach you on social media, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Okay. Yeah, all right. So first I want to give thanks to our sponsors. Sure. Uh, Rook, our Ruka show you roll and bonsai bowls. Nice. Boom. And then, um, and then of course to my my professors. You know, all my teammates, professors, help us get better every day. Mm-hmm. And uh, also thank you guys. You know, thanks to show the art too. Ooh, Ooh. everybody. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Always post the sickest techniques. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, uh, if you guys want to reach us on social media or yeah. anything like that, uh. We got a Facebook and Instagram. It's it's Roots three 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 underscore Tolo Bros. It's pretty long. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and then uh, and then our Facebook, I think, is just Rutolo Bros. Yeah, no, Tolo Twins. Or Rutolo Twins. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Nice. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We we had a blast, and you know, we hope to talk to you guys soon. Definitely. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys. Have thank a good you day. guys. Peace. 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 Later.